Barry. Yes, Mr. Sumner? Raise the privacy screen, please. Sir? KBLA News Flash. Frank Sumner, head of Meridian Press International, has been assassinated. Mr. Sumner was found strangled in his limo earlier today in California. The Front for a Unified Palestine, the same group who assassinated Lee Francis in New York four months ago, has planned responsibility. Like Sumner, Francis was a driving force behind the Palestinian-Israeli Peace Initiative. More details on this breaking story will be available in our scheduled newscast at the top of the hour. At that time, the mayor of Orange County will have a statement for the press, and we also expect to hear from the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the U.S. Secretary of State. Now, let's get back to your afternoon drive home commercial free hour here on KBLA. I'm holding the run, John. Where's the story? Uh, give me 10 minutes. Start the run. No, we don't have the Bennett Commission story. Put the city council's no smoking boat in the dead space. Right. Look at that. That's the last favor, John. From now on, you're just like everyone else. This is John McWhorter. I'm not in. Leave a message. John, it's Brenda Hopkins. Call me as soon as you get this message. Clive Carter. Hey, Clive. John McWhorter. John, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I need some help, Clive. What kind of help? Uh, you know, anything. Uh, I've been a jam story-wise. I mean, is there an ops that you're on? You know, something that's cold I can uh, scribble a few words about. All right, listen, uh, a lot of this is going to leak out anyway. Are you on that Frank Somna murder? No, but it can be if you give me something. Well, there's two students, young men, 
who haven't attended their uh, UCLA classes in a week. They're foreign exchange students. The FBI searched their house last night. Now they've sealed the place off. Turns out that Somner, happily married with three kids, by the way, cruises a student ghetto and uses his limo as a mobile love nest. OK, slow down, slow down. See, so pick these uh, students up, right? Oh, yeah. But somehow his chauffeur fucked up. His name is um, Larry Quinn. Quinn. Quinn, is, uh, is he in on this, the, uh, the chauffeur? Probably not, but they're flying him to New York tomorrow. Robert Lecker and David Lewis, the FBI's top anti-terrorist guys, are handling this case, and they're based here. In New York. Oh, yeah, I know them. One more thing, John. It's a big crackdown on domestic radicals. You can expect the fur to fly with the civil liberties types within the next few days. Why? Why? Because they're kicking down doors, dragging people out, processing warrants later. Listen, John, uh, none of this is being disseminated outside of a small group. Lecker and Lewis will come down on you if you print it. I can handle it. You've been warned. Thanks. Now, don't thank me. All right, what about this border you build up on the Sudan? Nasty. NATO peacekeepers are pulling out. We're not sending anyone. AP and Reuters feeds. What about this Bennett Commission story? This tainted blood issue is going to be big. McWhorter dropped the ball on that one, so I've handed it off to Deb. She should have something by tomorrow. All right, what about this Spirex industrial espionage story? The grand jury returns a verdict tomorrow. It'll go to trial. Good. Sorry, I'm late. I was pulling some stuff on the uh, Frank Sumner murder. That's not your story. Oh, do you have an exclusive on it or something, huh? No, but, uh, you know. What do you got on Huh? What do you have? I'm, I'm waiting on some sources that'll link. John, you and I need to have a serious talk after this. Here's my side of the talk. Frank Sumner was murdered by two Palestinian men posing as student hustlers. The FBI are looking at two suspects, searching their house now. Also, there's some uh, serious civil rights violations. FBI kicking in doors and such. What about your sources on this? They're real. All right, John, you're on the story. Friend, I have the story. Carl, he's not going to be tagging along. Now work together or separately. Either way, get me the story. Thank you, everyone. Good work. Hey, shouldn't you be out cracking big stories when you be out cracking open a bottle of scotch? Whoa. Real subtle, Carl. Subtle? Yeah. You sure you know what that means, John? You should look it up. It's in the dictionary. Right around the word sober, so you may not have seen it. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. It's right before suck my dick. All right, John, look. I want to work with you about as much as you want to work with me. So why don't you just do whatever the fuck you want, and I'll do the same. You got it. Yeah, give me the number to UCLA, please. Simon. Hello. Sarah. Charles. Hope, friend. How'd you get in here? Well, John, exactly the same way we got in that security guard's office so long ago. Well, get out of my house. Now. We had to let ourselves in. We didn't know if we were being followed. What do you want? You know, the uh, Frank Sumner killing, uh, it affects us. What'd you have to do with that? Nothing. Nothing. But the FBI is rounding up radicals on bogus charges and asking questions. Yeah, I'm on the story. I've covered that angle, but... Well, that's the problem. We had nothing to do with Sumner checking out of the hotel life, but we have plenty to do with Sandino Luminoso, you see. Peru? Shining Path gorillas? I've been hiding a young woman in my apartment for some time now. She's one of their lieutenants. 
I'm still on parole. We need a safe house, John, just for a few days, okay? What? Here? Yeah. You owe us. Uh-uh. No way. The past is just that. Long gone. No fucking way. Oh, yes way. I'll tell you what. I'm going to introduce you to someone right now, okay, Rosa? This is Rosa Zaro. This is my friend, uh, John McWhorter. Sarah and I have known him for years. Come here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck do you think you're doing, man? Just calling in an old debt, John. Huh? Bullshit to that. Yeah? Look, I'm stuck and I'm stuck fucking bad, okay? Do you think that we would have stalked you, broke in here, if this wasn't necessary? Hey, can't you find someone else? Man, a hotel, I'll oh, pay. you're too much. Someone else? John, I did 15 fucking years in Sing Sing, okay? That could have been five years if I gave up your name, but I didn't. You know what was up when they're asking for your name? They sat me in a chair, they folded a telephone book across my fucking face, and they beat me with their billy clubs. They broke both my fucking jaws. So please, don't tell me that the past is in the past or whatever. Please, okay? How long is she gonna be here? Two days, three at most. This is not a negotiation, John. What's up? <sighs> Your friend can stay. Thank you. Let's go. I'm really sorry. Ah, oh, fuck it, you're right. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You're fine. Uh, you can sleep on the couch. This is very kind of you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, you speak English well. I was educated here. Oh, still, it's... Could we talk about diction tomorrow? I'm, I'm very tired. Sure. Got something to sleep in? Uh, pajamas, nightgown? No, everything I have, I'm wearing. We kind of left in a hurry. Yeah. I'll get you something. I picked the lock and taped over the hasp. You can walk right in. Everything's ready. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it, Sarah. Okay, if I see anything, I'll flash at Randy. John, you've got what? Simon. If something happens, honk the horn. Yeah, what if something does happen? Huh? If you can pick me up, great. If not, just get out of here. All right, let's, let's do this. Fun, but we gotta tone it down. Oh, what's the matter? Well, the ACLU's found out about us breaking down all these doors, and they've called for a press conference tomorrow, and they could be on our ass. So I'm suggesting we gotta pull right back and just go for the straight question. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Okay, there's one more thing. Okay, Bob, listen. I've been checking for some uh, Arabic names in California missing persons, right? And? Well, there's one. It's an interesting uh, professor from the University of California, Berkeley. 
Well, our two suspects are from UCLA. Yeah, I know. It could be nothing, but you never know. They're going to send it to me tomorrow anyway. Yeah, well, now, go home. Get some rest. You look like unadulterated shit. Thank you very much. Talk to you in the morning. We've come this far. Why stop? The point was a moral victory. We've accomplished that. If the United States government ties these assassinations with us, they'll bomb us back to the Stone Age. They won't make the connection. <laughs> the FBI is presently searching Sayed and Ankash's house. What? How? You know, I wish you'd stop underestimating these people. We move quickly and carefully and get our people out. Exhausted. Rosa. Rosa from Peru. I'm curious, uh, why can't you go back there? I'd rather not talk about that. Sure. Listen, I better get going. Uh, there's not much in the fridge, but, uh, but I'll bring you something home to eat. Thank you. Uh, you should stay away from the window and uh, don't use the phone. The info on those FBI agents. Hey, thanks. You're the best. Okay. Well, listen, I need uh, some information on a woman named Sarah Archer. Anything you have on the info system, uh, plus her, you know, her current address, her phone number, uh, employer, anything. When do you need it back? The SAP, sweetheart. Oh, also, she's on parole, so I need her parole officer, what she did, uh, stuff like that. And uh, do a pull on the shiny path. The Peruvian gorillas? That's them. Any connection it may have with America. What do you think of today's headline? Well, I think that reporter deserves a raise, is what I think. Maybe I should just let him keep his job. John, I think you should go to L.A. Well, La La Land will have to wait. Some of the chauffeurs just arrived in New York City. You know, I look at you and you know what I see? Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. You are trying to tell us that Frank Sumner tells his big, strapping, tough bodyguard to just go, take a walk, and you do. Yeah, it happens all the time. It does. Yeah, go ask the other drivers. Have you had a polygraph administered yet, Larry? What? You mean a lie detector? That's right. No, no, fuck this. Fuck this, I want my lawyer here. Welcome to the real world, Larry. I don't want my lawyer here. You know what I wanted? I wanted the Bills to win a Super Bowl. One fucking Super Bowl. And that didn't happen either, did it, Larry? <laughs> Larry, come on. Do us a favor. Tell us what happened. There was too much in Shining Path for a hard copy of it. It's on that disc. Any American connection? Not really. They're a bunch of maniacs, but stay-at-home types. And this is the stuff on Sarah Archer. Ain't much there. Phone number, outdated addresses. She moves more than a deadbeat dad. My pal at ATT is in tomorrow, so I'll get a current address first thing in the morning. Great. Oh, and she's not on parole. Yes, she is. No, she's not. I called. Not on parole? What the fuck? She said she had car trouble. You know, so I, I went back to her car to help her. It was, I, I don't know, three or four hundred yards away. Get there, it turns out it's nothing. She just flooded the engine. 
Mm. You fixed it. Yeah. She went back into her car and drove off, and I went back to the limo. What the fuck were you thinking, really? You got two Palestinian guys in the back of the limo, you know, and a dark-skinned gal comes up to you. How was I supposed to know they're Palestinian? It's California, man. I, 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 I thought they were tanned. I thought they were Look, tanned. Look, sir, I swear to you, I didn't know. You know, I get back to the limo, and I didn't even think anything was wrong for an hour, and then I, I look. Don't touch it. Just look at it. Is that her? Oh, Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's her. How'd it go today, John? No, uh, not much. I'll uh, have more info tomorrow. Keep it up. Yep. McWhorter. It's Clyde. Can you meet me in two hours? Yeah, usual place. Sure. I'll see you then. <clears throat> Sorry I'm late. We got an ID on another suspect in this thing, and I thought I'd bring you the whole shooting match. Curious, uh, why are you doing this? What'll Lecker do to you? Me? Yeah, nothing. Never met the man. It's a matter of making them look bad, which makes me look good. And you. Yeah, we're gonna bring him down a couple of pegs. There's three people in here. Two men are the ones who killed Salma. The woman ran interference with the chauffeur. Don't you ever get tired of this? Sometimes the surprises are so pleasant. John, when they come down on you, we don't know one another. I'll be looking forward to your article. Let's start with your not Peruvian. I'm fucked. Did you tell the police? Uh, what's your name again? Huh? What is it? It's, uh, yeah, uh, our mighty calc. No, our mighty calc. I have not called the cops. Okay, just calm down. Calm down? Listen, lady, I don't think you realize what you've done. I'm fucked. If not by the FBI or by the cops and by, by whatever maniac organization you belong to. Simon and Sarah are the only ones who know that I'm here. My people will not harm you. We're, we're in your debt. Are you serious? Your people are a bunch of crazies. I mean, Sarah and Simon are nuts as well. Shit! Look, I'm going to be here for two or three days. Then I'll be gone. And then you could resume your life and as if it never happened. Yeah, well, it doesn't work that way. In 24 hours, your face will be as famous as Elvis's. Well, then don't report it. Don't report it. I've got to report it. The guy that gave me this expects to see it in print. And anyway, I'm not the only reporter with these contacts. This story will be out in a day, two days at most. You've got to get out of here. You understand? The feds will be at my doorstep the minute this story breaks. You're a famous reporter. You must have some leeway. It doesn't matter. Now, where does Sarah live? I have no idea. I met her five minutes before we broke in. Oh, that's great. That's fucking great. I'll find her. Now, why do you have to write about me? Now, the guy who gave you this, and he's not the kind of guy you want wondering what's up. Do you understand me? I have this. I have to use it. No, just calm down. All right. I can buy us a day. I'll go with the story on the two guys in the car, and then uh, I'll have to write you up tomorrow, and you have to get out of here. Oh, shit. The entire part of the story, right. you know what I'm saying? Yes, please. Did you come up with anything yet? Yeah, a little. But Sherlock must have come up with something as well, huh? Here's our two killers. 
I'll have the story written up in a half an hour. We're gonna scoop the nation. Yep. We're gonna have the FBI down our throats, too. Well, we could publish it under a byline, naming both of us as writers, run interference for each other. <sighs> Jeez, you're a sleaze. My story, end of story. Huh. I'll bring in legal now. You sure you're ready for this? It's weird. I think I was born for this one. Hey, how are you tonight, Nelson? <laughs> All right. FBI parked outside. You said that would happen. I'd like you to tell me what I've gotten myself into. I'm not so sure myself. Try. I grew up in the West Bank. My parents wanted me to go to university in the States. So I went to California, got my master's, and was going for my doctorate when my father died. I went back home to be with my mother. And that's when everything changed. Changed? My brother was a part of a group that tried to kill some soldiers. Our house was bulldozed, and um, I ended up in a refugee camp with my mother. She died there. And, uh, you got out. How? Some men approached me one night and said that I could go back to the States and finish my studies. All I had to do was just help them sometime down the line if they asked. I see. And they asked? Not for a long time. I finished my studies, and then I got the job teaching at Berkeley. I wonder how the dean feels about you killing Frank Sumner. Hmm? I didn't kill him. I didn't even know what was going on. I pretended to have car trouble. I was supposed to ask a guy for help and then occupy him. That's what I was supposed to do. Now, you didn't realize they were killing a man while you were doing this? John, I swear it's true. I've done half a dozen jobs or errands or whatever for them, and they always ask me to do something simple, like deliver a document or let somebody stay in my place. I told them that I wanted out that I'd done enough, but that's... I did not go over well. Also, prepare a memo. Anyone found leaking information to the press will not only be fired, but prosecuted. And I want to find those leaks. Pull his phone records, see who he's been calling. And no more sharing information with the CIA, NSC, anyone. Wait till the director reads this. Our heads are going to roll. <laughs> well, we'll have to live with it. We cannot let it affect the case. With headlines like this, whoever's sponsoring these assholes is going to panic. This changes things. What does it change? It changes how certain we are about getting them out of the country. The American Simon picked up the passports and the package. It will be delivered. It will be delivered. Doesn't matter. They need us to get them out of the country, and right now, there's a problem. What are you saying? These men are heroes. I know they are. It's not in our hands. Hello, Merrick. Hosni. Michelle. You seem surprised to see me. Well, yes, I didn't think... You'd, as we Americans say, drop the ball? So where are our friends resting their heads? An American is hiding them. Well, I better get some rest. I have a busy day tomorrow.
Well, if this was going to cause so much trouble, why did you publish it? Because it's my job. Anyway, I uh, told him I had the story before I knew I had the Mata Hari living with me. Well, why are you helping them? Helping me? I don't know. I don't know if I have much of a choice. I think it's more than that. I told you everything. I, I'm trusting you with my life. Tell me. You know the story of Lord Jim? No. Well, he was a guy that uh, screwed up as a kid and spent the rest of his life running from that mistake. I don't understand. Uh, about 30 years ago, uh, Sarah, Simon, myself, and a few others tried to plant a bomb in the ROTC recruiting station on the campus. It was a crude pipe bomb thing. This girl got me involved. Girlfriend? Uh, she was a bit older, but, uh, yeah, girlfriend. I was nuts about her. Go on. Bomb went off in her hands. She was killed. She was well known on campus, as were Sarah and Simon. They got picked up. They protected you? Yeah. They protected me. Did they go to jail? Yeah, me and this other guy, Randy, got away. And Randy is Sarah's brother. He fled to Paraguay. Pretty sure he's still there. That's why they brought me here. in meeting room B with Brenda. The FBI, my God! What has Brenda done? Very funny, smart guy. They're talking about charging you with possession of stolen property. What? They're serious, John. They want to know where you got your information. They're saying it's their property. You know, I don't get it, Carl. You have a dick and a brain. How come no one's arrested you for theft? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lecker. I can appreciate your position. Just a minute, just a minute, please. It is our opinion that this information may as well be copyright, and as such gives us the legal right to trace its origins and its end. That's insane. Have you ever heard of the First Amendment? Mr. McWhorter, you've gone way beyond your right of confidentiality. We are taking the position that you stole that information from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Well, that's a novel interpretation of copyright law. We look forward to arguing its merits in court. Gentlemen, my people are doing their jobs far beyond what would satisfy me. Now, I suggest you go home and concentrate on your people doing the same. You understand that you people are putting people's lives in jeopardy by printing this story. Cut the shit. It's quite simple. I just want to know where you got that story. Read my mind. I don't have to. In two hours, I'll know everything about you. For example, I'm quite curious. Yesterday, you made a telephone call to the Algerian embassy from your home. Were you planning a little trip? Everything, Mr. McWhorter. Your entire life. up with anything more, and I think they might just try and take us to court. Well, we've been there before. 
I hope you don't have any dark secrets, John. I finally got these from the Algerian embassy. This is our mighties. And we got the other two. Who is it? something right now. Can you call me back in 10? Listen, I've been trying to call you all day yesterday. You better be there in 10 minutes, okay? Right. Well, if you've anything else to ask me, you can call my lawyer or the Civil Liberties Union. We'll be going. Yeah, what? That was her mother who called, right? Yeah, so? Check the file, but I'm sure her mom's been dead for years. Let's uh, hang here, see if she goes anywhere. What do I tell John? When do we get her out of his place? You know what? They didn't say. So I'm assuming it's gonna be tomorrow, and I fucking hope so, too. Because my nerves are shot, I feel like a kitten is playing with them. Hello. Sarah, it's John. Oh, hi. I was just thinking about you. I have something for you. Good. That's just what I wanted to hear. Why don't we meet at 10 at dawn in the village? See you there. How'd it go? I'm on a roll. This mic is going nuts. You're the new hero in this place. It's just like old times. To me. Well, the front page of my newspaper tomorrow is all about you. My picture, too? Everything. You relax. It'll be all right. I'm meeting Sarah tonight, and apparently she has your uh, passport, plane ticket, and whatever. Good. What did she say when I was getting out of here? No. Nothing. Uh, this is unnerving, isn't it? You should be in my shoes. Listen, I had a visit today in my office from the FBI. It's unlikely, but they may show up here. And uh, if they do, there's something I want to show you. Come here. This guy had uh, research the sources gave me and <laughs> came in handy in other ways, too. My second wife was a lunatic around about booze in the house. I used to hide it in here. Yeah, go in. Go in? 
Yeah, go in. I want to show you how to, how to lock it from inside. Go ahead. It's, it's locked, John. How, how do I unlock this? You tell me why you were calling the Algerian embassy yesterday. I want to know who you are. And you can spare me the little errand girl bullshit and the noise about your old family troubles back home. Who were you calling? Let me out. As soon as you tell me who you are. Let me out of here! John, you're frightening me. Oh, well, you're frightened, are you? Well, you ought to be in my shoes. Let me out of here now! Shut up and listen. I've got the FBI sitting outside my house. I've got them coming in my office telling me I'm calling the Algerian embassy. And while I'm counting on you being the fuck out of my house tomorrow, I'd like to know what surprises you're leaving. All right, I phoned them. Because I panicked when you said that you were going to write about this. Yeah, what'd they say? What'd you tell them? Nothing. I didn't even know who I was trying to get a hold of. My contact before I had been at the Algerian embassy. Well, was he there? No, he went back to Algeria. Please, John, let me out. Please, I'm telling you the truth. John, where are you? John? I'm afraid, John. God, what is taking him so long? Just give us the names. Please, John, I'm scared. Let me out. Uh, just look above you on the ledge. You'll find a key. Fits above the latch. Put the key back and the lights. You bastard. Listen, you've been here too long for me to back out now, but if uh, you think I'm gonna be your patsy, think again. Uh, do you don't want? you ever do from... that to me again! Come on. Don't ever! All right, come on! I am I'm not sorry. your prisoner! I'm sorry! I didn't mean to scare you, You're all right? You're more paranoid than me! I just had to be sure. I have no idea what's going on. I'm dependent on you, so stop testing me! There's nothing more for you to find out. I'm sorry I scared you. Okay. I'll try not to rile you again, all right? I thought, I thought you were getting the FBI. <laughs> not likely. I'm in this pretty deep. My papers are ready. Now move me quickly. A toast to that. for them, so I just parked them here in the van for a couple of days. Top level's always empty. How are they? They're fine. They got food and water. They got a toilet. They got a bed. They're fine, I guess. And our mighty? Sarah knows the exact address. It's on the Lower East Side. So how are you going to get them out? <laughs> that won't be a problem. I've done this before. Yes. Michelle here. Send in the cleanup crew. 
Three of our problems have been taken care of. So where's this Sarah? I don't know, but she has the money and the passport. All right then, I'll take care of it tomorrow, en route to the airport. Very well. People in Berkeley must think that I'm a snob or aloof. They have no idea how much I want to have dinner at their home or go to a movie. I never know if somebody's striking up a conversation, whether they're genuinely interested or they have more orders for me. So, no more secrets. No more secrets. You know, when I was a kid, I used to love secrets. It's good at keeping them, too. And I kept a secret my whole adult life. Like the bombing? I never told any of my wives, my family. You know, having to keep what I did a, a secret never allowed me to have a whole life. What do you mean? My last marriage, I was head over heels, crazy. Life is worth living again in love. It's great for the first couple of years. But uh, I became instinctively evasive, I guess. And your wife didn't like that? No, she tried to give me a talk, and I retreated. And I started to fuck up. My wife was away on business. I went to a party, met a woman, brought her home. We were in bed. My wife called. Her voice came on the answering machine. She said how much she missed me. I was looking at this other woman I didn't even know. My wife was saying how, um, you know, everything's gonna be all right. We're gonna work it out. Ah, oh, it's fucking awful. How did she find out? She didn't. I just couldn't keep on doing it to her anymore. I left her. Why do you tell me these things? Because I know I'll never see you again. And I know you understand. I uh, better go meet Sarah. When does she leave? Tomorrow. Can you hang in? Have to, I guess. Mighty? Yes. I was just taking a shower. This is for you. And there's something else. Oh. <laughs> I kind of got him for no particular reason. I guess just to uh, say I'm sorry for locking you up. Hmm. Whoa. 
Careful. They've got thorns. And you went right by the FBI with these. Ah, uh, yeah, um, you know, a couple of years ago I was doing this article on the cultures and an FBI connection, and, uh, for about, uh, three weeks they almost lived outside. I, um, I brought them coffee myself. No scotch. I almost uh, never run out. I'll, I'll be right back, huh? Champagne instead. Lord Jim, what happened to him? I died for his sins. Shot straight through the heart. Morning. Oh, your hair looks nice. Thanks for noticing. You know, I must have left my watch with my gun. What time is it anyway? Almost 11. Yeah, well, I spent the night here last night, okay, looking for a connection between Sarah Archer and McWhorter. Oh, yeah? I think I found it. They went to school together, okay? And then all of a sudden, their studies were cut short because she spent a little time in the federal penitentiary. The bombings, the bombings. McWhorter was involved. Now, that I don't know. I'm still checking on that, but get this. He's been up for five national newspaper awards, and he's won two of them. Guess what they all have in common? CIA covert operations. He's connected. I thought so. He must have ratted them out. Well, we can't prove it. But we sure as hell can bluff with it. I don't think I'll go in today. It is our last day together. More. Yes. Hello. John, it's Jean. Hey, Jean, what's up? Just wanted to let you know you've got some competition. Yeah, how's that? Miami Herald. Richard Lee put out a piece today on our mighty calc. I'm trying to build on it now if you want to come in. Well, what's the lead piece about? Uh, he quotes some unnamed Israeli security sources. She was never charged, but she was responsible for the murder of a Palestinian civil servant. When was this? Um, a decade ago. This guy was a distant uncle of hers. The guy was a suspected collaborator or something. The piece has a lot of conjecture, but Lee always has good sources. Are you coming in? Yeah, I'll be there shortly. Start digging. Is everything OK? Yeah, who is it? FBI John Bob Lecker. John, how's it going? 
What are you doing here? We came to offer you a job. A what? A job. Seems you got a little experience with the CIA, John. Ah, uh, let us in, John. The neighbors are gonna get nosy. All right, you got one minute. Okay, say your bit and get out. Well, we were wondering why, after 20 years, you would suddenly hook up with your old bombing buddy. It's not a good picture. It's my bad side. Fellow who took this shot says that you and Sarah acted very suspiciously. You walk in, whisper, 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 she walks out. Did you say something to piss her off, John? Or maybe she found out that you turned her and the rest of them in 25 years ago. Did she find that out, John? Because you are a fucking traitor. Your bones is friends like that. Why doesn't he write about that? Because all the other papers are going to be writing about it tomorrow. All right, what are you doing here? Well, I might start by tearing this dump apart. That's the first thing I might do. Yeah? Let's see your warrant. Got one? You got I was it. speaking metaphorically, really, John. You're right. You understand what a metaphor is, right? Yeah, look, I don't give a shit who you sold down the river 25 years ago or who's bum boy at the CIA you are. All I care about is Sarah Archer. She's a suspect in the Frank Sumner murder. See, she cut short an interview the other day, John. Phone rang. I guess she went to it. She picked it up. She said it was her mom. You know what? Ma's dead. The LUD say the phone call came from, came from your newspaper. Did you make that call? They're the death penalty in California, right? Yeah, they say it smells of bitter almonds. You might want to get some air freshener in the same flavor. So you get used to it. I'm a reporter. I report these things. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. But you know what makes us curious, John? Is why are you the only reporter in this country nailing this story? Yeah, look, you're getting these stories from someone, aren't you? Why can't you be generous? Give us a name. What are you going to do to me, huh? Ruin me? I'm not telling you anything. If we want the woman and we want the students, we are offering you a deal here. Get out of my home. If I don't hear from you, I'm going to leak your involvement with the ROTC bombing. Your little private affair could become very public. Here's my card. You have 24 hours. Trade it. Think he'll blank? If he doesn't, his life's over. You don't have to be part of it. Just give us the names. I can't. Can you do life in jail? What? That young woman is dead. Murder. I didn't kill her, man. I... I loved her. You were committing a crime and someone died. It doesn't matter if you meant it. Doesn't matter if you loved her. She's dead. You're guilty of murder. No, you don't understand. It wasn't... Just give us the names and you'll never see the inside of a courtroom. You're a small fish. No. We want the big fish. They've planted other bombs, and they'll plant more. Get up. Get up. I said get up! The most depressing thing about all this is that it can probably get worse. Be quiet. Or what? You're gonna shoot me? Yes! You betray your friends! What about now? What are you gonna do now? I thought you'd understand. Yeah, I gave them the names they wanted over 30 years ago, and my life's been shit since. But now, I've got a chance to fix it. You're a liar. Did you ever hear of lies of omission, huh? It's like when you didn't tell me that you killed your uncle in the West Bank.
Guys, hey, I need a fit. I'm uh, John McWhorter. I'm the columns upstairs. Yeah, yeah, we know who you are. You and the asshole have been writing about how much the FBI's been fucking with them Arabs. Hey, Man, we could get off writing all that un-American shit. I didn't do it, guys. I just write about it, all right? That's bull fucking shit. I read your crap. Okay, I'm talking to wrong people. I'll just uh, head on down the line. See you guys later. Thanks a lot. Hey, hey, you're here. So tell us what you want. All right, uh, I need to go with you guys for a couple of hours. Why? I'm being watched. I need to get out of the building, go somewhere, get back in without being seen. Why do we get out of it besides a shitload of trouble? Uh, you'll figure prominently in the article. How prominently? Whatever you want. Yeah, okay. How about, uh, how about our pitches? Yeah, photographs, the uh, bravery of every man, and all that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be famous. Why don't you tell me where she is? <gasps> You know, there's no way out. Come on, Sarah. The wrists and elbows? They're easy. But doing the knees? Now, they break anyone. Come on, Sarah. Come on. I don't want to pull the trigger. Huh? No? That's the man out there. Supposed to leave the papers in the lobby? Paperboy delivers them. Yeah, no problem. I'll be five minutes. Right.
It's me. She's not here. He must have moved her. You might have to book me a new flight. I'll call you as soon as it's done. Yes, are you delivering now? Where is she? I don't know. Maybe she's at Sarah's. Sarah died a very nasty death. And she didn't have to. These have a tendency to go off. Although she did have an incredible tolerance for pain. Very impressive. All right, I won't bullshit you, my friend. Today is your last day on Earth. Now, I don't have control of that, but I do have control of the uh, means. It can be an easy death or a hard one. The choice is yours. The FBI are outside. <laughs> well, they can't help you now. Have you seen the Sistine Chapel dome? What? You know, the ceiling, Michelangelo? There's this section, it's quite beautiful, where God extends his, his finger to man, his hand held out for life. You see, I'm discussing our relationship. Today, I'm a kind of God, offering you an easy death. Extend your hand to me. Tell me where she is. I don't know. Sit down. I said sit down. getting tedious for you. I know I'm getting bored. Just tell me where she is before I have to make it interesting. I'm telling you the truth. I was assigned to the story and I had to get her out of here. Sarah took her somewhere else. That is not true. You don't have much of a toolbox, do you? You fucking animal. We helped you people. Me, Sarah, Simon. And now you kill us, huh? You know, that would be a persuasive argument. If I had a moral base. You know, there's a nerve ending right above the knee. I believe it's the no. sciatic. No. Come on. There's only one ending. Why don't you tell me where she is and get it over with? I don't. What is wrong with you? 
Uh, Clean shaven. Uh, I bet you have a razor in the bathroom. something out. I can help get you out of here. I don't know. Why didn't you tell her where I was? Well, I already told you. And my chance. My, my chance to fix everything. Uh, listen, <clears throat> I, uh, I gotta know. Did you really kill that guy? At my brother's funeral. I walked into a room, and the man that we thought of as our uncle was on the phone. And he was telling somebody how he killed my brother. His gun was just sitting there. I picked it up, and when he turned around, I shot him. I would do it again. No more secrets. No. No more secrets. I just wonder if he knows where our three suspects are. Maybe. I think he's being played by somebody, though. No, we, we rattled him this morning. He'll make his move tonight. You OK? Yeah, just thinking. Maybe a couple ways out of this. Well, I have money. They gave it to me. I can, uh, I can give you half, or um, maybe we could get away together. Sure you want to do this? Together? Yes. Well, there's two cars out there. I don't know how we're going to get you out of here. Well, maybe out the back. Oh, I don't know. Who is it? Pizza. Crazy bitch ordered a pizza. Wait a second.
Yeah, just uh, bring it inside, would you please? Okay. Yeah, in the kitchen. Hi. It's uh, 1450. Hi. Whoa. Fuck! Listen, I don't want any trouble. Okay, take your coat off. Come on before I blow your brains out. Please don't kill me. I didn't do anything to you, man. You had to. Let's have your car keys. Come on! It's in the uh, jacket pocket. I'll get this. Thank you. Sure. Hey, I'm starved. Let's say we call for one of those, huh? <laughs> Why don't you just grab the pizza guy and order it straight from me? It's not a bad idea. Hey, you know what? We had pizza yesterday. Why don't we order Chinese food? Make a tie and you got a deal. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna get her. Just take it easy. Everything will be all right. Yeah. There he is. Let's go. I figure it's we just ordered the food. <laughs> Thirty years ago, this reporter began an involvement with Sarah Archer, who died today at the age of 49. Her story, which is my story, can now be told. Three decades ago, I betrayed Sarah Archer. She didn't know it when she asked me to hide a mighty calc. John, what happened to your leg? Uh, nothing. I just uh, took a little fall. Listen, I want to talk to you a second, all right? Remember yesterday when you mentioned going to Los Angeles? Yeah. OK, you were right. Three people that killed Sumner are still in California, and they want to tell the world their story. What are you going to do? I want to interview them tonight, but they're on the West Coast. Well, get on a plane to Los Angeles now. No, they're not in the LA. They're about 500 miles out in the desert. All right. I'll book you a private jet. I'm giving you carte blanche. Brenda, FBI looking for me. I'll get the lawyers. You get me the story. I'll come through. Want some interference for me, all right? Done. Yeah, Bob Leica. OK, listen carefully. I'm at Sarah Archer's house. She's been murdered. My life's in danger. You get me out of here, I'll tell you everything I know. All right. I go to the door and lock it. There are FBI agents outside. They'll be there in a minute. Have them slip their IDs under the door before you let them in, OK? Understood? Yeah. Sarah Archer has been murdered.
You made it. Yeah, we're not there yet. Let's go. He fucked us. Get someone over to the Herald. And you, Dave, take his house. Done. Blacker! Hello, this is Carl Smythe at the Herald. What the fuck? Get upstairs, get upstairs. Get upstairs! What's going on, kid? You by yourself? Yeah. What are you doing here? Pizza? We better keep low. We might just make it. Now there's a sign on the car. It says Tony's Pizza. Well, he's booked a plane. He's heading for LaGuardia. Okay, good. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'll go there myself. Hey, get another team up to LaGuardia. Shit, battery's dead. Gotta make this call. I'll do it from the phone in there. Look, you stay here, lay low. When I come back, we'll make a beeline for the plane. Okay. Hey, Randy? Oh, come on, man. You gotta be there. Hey, Randy. It's John McWhorter. Randy, listen. I'm in big trouble. FBI, get out of the car. Keep your hands where I can see him. Get out of the car now. Gun is at your back. Give me that other arm right now. Bring it back behind your back. Spread your left. The money. Slight change of plans. Control, this is flight 733. We are ready for takeoff. Hey, the destination is no longer Los Angeles. Where are we going then? I'll have to file a whole new flight plan. Asuncion. Paraguay? I can't take you to Paraguay. Get this fucking plane airport, man. Go! Go! Get away, John. Yeah. Get away. We got away. You made it. 